In this next section, we're going to look at making comments into your code. So at the beginning of a new script, what I recommend you do is have a header or a basic description about what the script does, who wrote it, when you did your last edits, and everything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into my script. So here I have it. I have it written by the date I started, the date of last edit. If I saved it online, I have the address to that. I have a basic description about what the script does, and I have any relevant notes that if I make any changes or what those changes are, etc., etc. And I can also add in any other relevant information. The problem with this, though, is that when I go to try to run my script, I'm going to get an error. And that's because the script is actually looking for instructions that it understands. And this block of text here isn't any instructions that it understands. So what we need to do is we need to hide it so that way when the script is running, it just completely ignores all of this text. And the way we do that is a couple of options. So the first way, what I would do, for example, of, of a block of text like this is I would comment it out as a block. The way you comment out a block of text like this is you start with a forward slash followed by an asterisk and then you go to the very last line that it is and you do the reverse which is an asterisk followed by a forward slash. Now if I save this and run it I don't have any errors because it's completely ignoring it. <clears throat> the next option is if I want to just comment out a single line. So here I have a bit of code and beside it I want to make a comment about what that code does. So all I do in that case is after the code I just put a semicolon and then make any comments that I want. What I can also do with this is if in my code there are specific things that I can make minor tweaks to, for example if it's an X and Y axis location, uh, what I can do is if I plan on making any changes to it, what I can do is I can put in my comment part here, I can put what it originally was, and now I can tweak around with this code here, play with it, and then if I decide, oh, you know what, I don't actually want to do that, I have as a reference what it originally was, and then I can just replace back into my code. The next way that we can actually make a comment is very similar to this way, except what we're going to do is we can comment out a code with a hotkey. Now this doesn't isn't going to work if you're only using Notepad, but if you're using Site for Auto Hotkey, and I imagine many other uh, script editors, it'll work the same. Is all you do is put somewhere in the code. So I have in this line right here. Any I can click anywhere in this line and then I can press control plus Q to comment out that line and then later on if I want to uncomment it I just do the reverse control Q likewise I can take what I had before and do the exact same thing I can highlight all the code that I want to comment out and I can press control Q and it'll comment it all out Next, what we're going to look at is commenting out code. So commenting out code is the exact same thing that we just did before, except we're going to be actually getting rid of a specific line. So here I have a, a script that has four lines of commands. All right. And during the testing, I want to see, perhaps I want to see if uh, a particular part of it's working, but I don't really care about anything else. What I can do is I can comment out that code and then when I run it, it'll completely ignore that line. Likewise, if I have a block of code, so for example, let's say I have all these commands here, but for some reason I'm getting a bug or I want to make some changes to it. What I can do is instead of erasing all of this, I can just comment it out and then rewrite new code. And then if I have to revert back to the old code, what I can do is just uncomment it and it's back to being good again. The last one is a very useful tip when you get into scripts that are hundreds of lines, perhaps thousands of lines long, and that is breaking up your code into sections. So you can make a section for anything that you want. It can be, you can perhaps break it up into labels or functions, or you can go a little bit deeper and break it up into specific things, uh, tasks that your script is doing. And the way you can do that is just by making a block comment basically at the beginning of each section so here I have this here and then I would replace this text with something that's more relevant to what 
the next section of code is going to be doing. So now, if I if I have a co uh, a script that's hundreds of lines long, I can easily find this different section by just finding the code that finding this highlighted section. So I know that okay. So if this was blah, so I'm looking for blah, and I'm just I'm scrolling up and down through my script. All I have to do is just look for this, and then I know that the code that follows it is deals with blah. And that's it for comments. In this next section, we're going to take a look at the single instance setting. Before I do that, though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some things to my script. So I'm going to add in my description, and then next I'm going to add in the persistent command. <clears throat> if I was to run this right now, I currently do have a previous version. So if I have a previous version of this script running, and then I go to run it again while I'm testing or writing it up, it'll give me this dialog box saying that there's a previous version running. And this gets annoying really, really quickly. So what we can do to get around that, so we don't have to deal with that dialog box, is include in our script at the very top the single instance setting. And there's three options for it. We'll go over them real quick. So the first one we'll do is single instance force. And what this does is if a previous version of our script is running and then we go to run it again, instead of us getting that dialog box asking us if we want to close out the previous instance and start a new one, it'll do that automatically. So if I save this and then run it again, no problem. And I can keep running it over and over and I never get that dialog box. So that's single instance force, which is one of the ones that I find the most useful. The next one is ignore. Now, we're not going to be able to actually test this just yet, but we'll come back to it another time. Uh, but I'll go over what it does. So basically what this does is if we include single instance ignore, if we have a previous version that is already running and we go to run the script again, it completely ignores our request to run it again and it plays out the old one. So we would actually have to have the script set up so that way it manually, that it exits on its own once it's complete, or we would have to go in and manually close it in order to run it again. Because if it has a previous version running and we go to run a new instance of it, it'll completely ignore the new request. Now, an example of when this is useful is one of the things you can do with auto hotkey is you can actually have a script run other scripts. So if I have an example of a script that has um, where I want it to play a sound effect, for example. So let's say I have a sound recording of a sentence. So how are you today? So this is the recording. So the first script come encounter something that says, OK, I need to trigger the second script that has the sound effect. It'll launch that second script, and then let's say that while it's playing out, so while it's going through that, hey, how are you today, uh, something in the first script causes that same script to get triggered again. But if we have the ignore in it, it'll completely ignore the next request for that to happen, and it'll con just continue on playing what it had before. In other words, what's going to happen if we have the single instance force, it'll start over the sentence again. So if the first time we ran it, it got through the word how. The second time, if it got triggered again, it would be how. And if it did it multiple times rapidly, it would be how, 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 how right? So if we don't want that, if we want to actually can finish out completely and then have exit on its own before we can trigger it again, we would include at the top of that sound effect script the ignore. The last one is off. Now off works is the opposite of the ignore, where this time what we can do instead is we can actually have multiple instances of the same script. So right now, if I have the single instance force, if I go to play that script again, it'll close out the previous version and start a new one. With the off, instead what it does is it just duplicates the script. So we can have 10 of the exact same script running at the same time. And once again, I can use the sound effect uh, example. So let's say if the first script ha gets trigger, triggers a sound effect, and that sound effect is a gun being shot. 
I don't want it to I don't necessarily want to wait until that script finished playing before I start the new one so what I can do is I can just create a new instance of it so each time it'll keep playing the first instance of the sound effect of a, sh a gunshot but I can also add multiple more so I can s it sounds like multiple gunshots going off at the same time so once again single instance force it'll, if a previous version of the script is running it'll close out of that and run the new one ignore it completely ignores the request to run the script again if it's already running and off it'll run multiple instances of the same script at the same time